Hello viewers, my name is Alan and welcome to my home workshop. Today I want to talk about an electric hoist that I've installed. Why I bought it, how I installed it and a couple of things I did to tune it a little bit to make it uh, really useful for me in my workshop. I hope you find it interesting. When I built my workshop I had it engineered so I could put a monorail in and uh, it's rated at one ton so it's been really helpful and useful over the years um, doing things like pulling engines out and such. These days I mostly use the uh, the monorail to uh, lift and um, uh, bring down machine tool accessories from this hayloft or mezzanine floor or half floor or whatever you want to call it. There's a storage platform anyway. So I've got things like the um, vertical head attachment for a milling machine there and uh, rotary table and uh, dividing head, things like that. They're really quite heavy. And using a chain pulley to put them up there is very tedious because as you can imagine, I've got to lift up through about um, two meters, three meters to, to get them up there. And there's a lot of winding. So I wanted to do things a bit differently. And uh, I decided that um, an electrical hoist, electrically powered hoist was the way to go because it's much more suited to um, the, the longer drop or higher lifts that I've got to do. Uh, this uh, hoist is rated for 800 kilograms, well actually 400 and 800 if you use a pulley to, um, to double up the rope. So it takes um, a 10 amp supply, 230 volt 10 amp and so I needed to run some power to it but otherwise the installation was just a matter of bolting it up to the monorail. I say that, it wasn't quite that simple because it's a very heavy unit and mounting it in place on my own meant that I had to come up with some sort of uh, lifting jig to hold it in position while I did the bolts up. So the way I got it mounted was to separate it into two pieces. There's the girder trolley bit which is actually bolted onto the, the girder and then the hoist is actually a lower piece, um, this piece here. Um, and then I made a, a cradle which um, is a close fit underneath the, um, the hoist and I had the, um, that cradle actually sitting on a, a floor jack so I could lift the, um, the hoist up to the, um, uh, the trolley after I'd uh, got it bolted on and that seemed to work out alright. So I made the cradle out of 19mm thick uh, particle board, made it pretty substantial because obviously the hoist is actually a pretty heavy bit of kit anyway. But I thought if I made the thing properly and um, with some durability it would be available to me if I ever needed to take the hoist down at some point in the future for maintenance or what have you. And in fact that did prove to be the case um, because when I was doing the wiring up I had a reason to take it down. So the cradle was worth the effort. And you can see in this picture a couple of the other um, heavier items that I have to deal with. On the left is the vertical milling head attachment for my uh, Victoria milling machine. And on the right um, uh, a quite a hefty dividing head for this, from the same machine. So this um, electric hoist works really quite well. But it's really also a bit brutal with the up and downs. Which means you can't um, gently put down anything that's a bit delicate like machinery accessories um, as is. So I considered quite a few options. I was going to put a soft start on the motor and, uh, and I was playing around with coming up with some sort of worm drive thing that I could use to do the last few inches with and suddenly dawned on me. All I needed to do was put a, a little lever action hoist in there to do the last little bit by hand like this and with that done I can easily use the electric hoist for the rest of the movement. And 
by the and by the way, as you see, this thing weighs 54 kilos, which is a little bit much for one person to hump around on their own. But lowering down, lowering it down gently is quite easy with the um, the lever action hoist. Do it as gently as you like. So that solves the problem, and I still have the speed from the hoist. For completeness, I thought I'd include a shot of each end of the support cable. So you can see the eye that's swaged in there and the, uh, the final runner is just tied to the, uh, the end to uh, keep it under control. This is a picture of the other end um, of the um, support cable. You can see I included a turnbuckle there to uh, um, allow for the tension to be put on the cable. Again, I just swaged these on using a little handheld hydraulic, hand hydraulic crimper. So what I did to um, suspend the power cable from the, uh, the traveller wire um, was I bought some of these um, pulleys from eBay. Very cheap. They might only have been uh, 20 or 30 cents each. I think <laughs> they were ridiculously priced. This hook, I think it was originally a hook but I made it smaller anyway, um, down so it would take a, happily take a five, I believe, mil screw. Then I used these P-clips and ran the cable through the P-clip and then a bolt through there and uh, it was perfectly satisfactory. So there's rubber insulation around the cable here and then the even though this is running on a steel wire, it's got a nylon pulley there. So it might not meet uh, wiring standards, but uh, I'm quite comfortable that it was a safe way to do it. So as you can see, the cable um, support mechanism works really well and pays the cable out and brings it back in as the uh, hoist traverses. I had made inquiries for a couple of companies that sell specifically this sort of cable support kit and arrangement, but uh, we were talking a lots of money. One quote was seven or eight hundred dollars, and I just wasn't prepared to pay that. So the arrangement I have up there, which seems to work quite well, is probably about maybe twenty dollars worth of pieces, um, including the cable and the eyes that I swaged in at each end and so on. Um, so very cost effective. So here's a close-up of the uh, way that I've uh, suspended the um, control cable from the, the unit. Done with the spring, so if it gets dropped, it takes the shock out of it and doesn't put any stretch onto the, onto the control wire. You can see as well, that's just the end of the standard uh, heavy-duty power extension cable that I've used. So all pretty simple really as it worked out. So as I noted before looking at how the control cable was attached to the hoist you can see here that there's a, a steel cable and all of the weight and the load is uh, carried by this cable and to the spring which you sure saw earlier. So the control cable is not subject to any stress at all.